getting smaller and faster and crazier. A semicon is a it is a very hard industry to be in. It requires a significant amount. The barrier to entry in semicon is very high. Requires a lot of capex. Requires a lot of upfront investment to really generate any um, any type of return. But you are getting into into uh, the laws of physics at this point in terms of how small you can go. Um, in terms of the 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 gate of of the transistors, in terms of the five nanometers or the seven nanometers, uh, the amount of compute and storage and network bandwidth um, required to make some of these chips or design some of these chips is, is just expanded. So you need to be able to have a, a tech, uh, both from a, a compute and a storage perspective an ability to accommodate going from seven to five nanometers requires 4x the amount of compute storage required to, to go generate that, that equipment. Even though you've only gone down to uh, two nanometers. The, it's really um, driven a lot of scale, driven a lot of um, simplification in the environment just because of um, your your ability to then go from a say a 10 terabyte design now goes to a 40 terabyte design. So handling that that physical size and physical space and it's not, you know, and you're now talking instead of billions of files, it's trillions upon trillions of files. We used to grow 40% storage year on year because you went from, you know, you reduced the, the nanometers. As soon as you reduce the nanometers, you either double, treble or quadruple your, your space requirements or your compute requirements. So as you are uh, going down, obviously the, the pressure on buying more servers, buying more storage, buying more network bandwidth is, is immense because they have absolute justification to say, you want me to deliver a, um, you know, a, a cutting edge chip in, in a 12 month time frame, but you're not giving me any resources to do that because it's not the same. You have to continually evolve. So, and, you know, enabling that scale is, is, uh, has been a challenge. To understand and forecast um, what, is, what is going to, to occur. And we do have a, a quarterly refresh cycle. So as much as we do the cost constraints, we do have a very active refresh cycle in terms of uh, adopting the latest technologies, adopting the latest Intel or AMD chipsets. And migrating over to SSDs, migrating over to um, you know significantly high bandwidth throughputs on, on the network. So, you know we have enough time to to go and uh, understand what's you know, the tsunami of of um, demand. You need to understand before you 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 go into any cloud or data center having a fundamental understanding of what your workload is, an understanding of your your scale and, and uh, the business ramifications of doing what you're doing, forming that baseline first to understand what that workload is and what what the advantages are um, is key, uh, of, of running it, wherever you're going to run it is key. So really getting to, to view the the, the cost structure and the margin of, of what that, that product is, I would say is, is a more fundamental issue rather than figuring out where, where it runs. There's definitely a power in, in keeping moving fast. Uh, even if sometimes you move in the wrong direction, you can, you can as long as you can course correct quickly, I think that's uh, you're you're still moving forward okay. because it's quite a dynamic environment and it's changing so quickly. You cannot you cannot um, afford to um, uh, pontificate too long. <laughs>